Hi, in this material I will explain you what is so-called core banking and what was the genesis of its creation or coining this abbreviation or term and what implications or current situations is about it. So in 70s of 20th century banks started or had servers in the branches but ATM networks started to arrive and this kind of technology, networking technology which caused a need to have like some system which could be handling uh, those data uh, from so-called centralized online real-time environment and that's the abbreviation for C-O-R-E banking so today core banking centralizing this data allowed customers to access the balance or money or status of the let's say accounts transactions and so on not only from the branch where they had the account but from any other branches or ATMs and uh, later when the internet started to spread access to the accounts through internet banking so now you know the genesis of the term centralized online real-time exchange or environment it's the yeah, genesis of the abbreviation. What now let's dive what actually core banking was and is today. So in business terms, core banking is the core traditional activity of banks. So maintaining deposits and granting loans or credits, then serving transactions, payment the customers, and in IT system the core banking systems usually had also these features or functionalities or domains served so in credit loans these systems needed to be able to calculate the interest rates on credits the installments and so on handle transactions and calculate interest rates or deposits and interface with other systems to for example settle card payments or settle wire transfers or other methods uh, of payments a common uh, needed feature also would be like uh, customer records so handling some records of the customer like his personal data so i will draw it here across as uh, cr so customer records what what's your name what's your address and so on that would form something which is the most traditional core banking system. Core banking system could be with or separated from general ledger system, which uh, transactions and booking would happen or would be posted to. And for reporting purposes to regulators, contemporary or board of the bank and management staff, some like uh, reporting uh, features or reporting system cards or as mentioned payment integrations would emerge with years and now you should have in mind that this technology flourished in 70s 80s 19th years of uh, 20th century so it, it often was uh, built on so-called mainframes or IBM servers uh, written in COBOL, which nowadays is considered as, an, let's say, ancient technologies. And when internet was rising in popularity or mobile payments, then um, these systems were not designed for handling such traffic it was assumed to be uh, used by customers in branches yeah or then handling cards but not to serving data for displaying them in internet banking or mobile banking on the beginning of internet or mobile era banks might be skeptic about uh, adoption yeah potential adoption of these technologies so it wouldn't make a business sense to replace or try to redo this core existing uh, banking technology. Just add some new 
channel. So a new online banking, for example, channel would be added, which had some, let's say, own database built on more modern stack from 90s or beginning of 21st century. And this system would, let's say, cache data from the customers from this core banking to serve it to customers in the internet banking. If it could be from one vendor or the same, but it could be also from other that when mobile phones reached uh, market adoption, it was served or bought another channel. And we have to remember that also there was the old channel of uh, branches, which might be another application and maybe uh, something to handle handle customers through normal phone, so someone work, working in call center, and all these so-called channels would be either using the data from core banking system or replicating them in some way to serve them more efficiently to and customers. Within those uh, most core banking system or old legacy systems, such concept as end of the day exist or cut off hours. So hours till it takes, let's say, the orders for booking or transactions or making payments, and then it need to store or hand handle next parts somewhere else, handle it somehow, because it needs time to calculate it and the online in the abbreviation centralized real time online in contemporary understanding was a bit exaggerated not back in 70s or 80s but in 21st centuries you wouldn't probably name those systems as real time and on <laughs> online maybe but not 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 necessarily real time another problem with this most uh, legacy core bankings is that they are built in old technologies and people who know how to code in the languages and technologies back, used back in 70s are getting close to retire or retiring and contemporary coders are not too keen to learn those ancient technologies. It would be like learning ancient languages. Some people might like it but most prefer to learn contemporary languages the number of those systems grew with years so i would speculate that banks depending on their size have from 50 up to 400 monolith systems within their it landscape and grow of number of systems complicate the architecture obviously and grows like the systematic risk because two complex system are just getting dangerous how could it happen something like mergers and acquisitions so if that doesn't look too complicated imagine that some bank bought other bank and has all this stuff uh, replicated and somehow migrated maybe but kept for example other core banking uh, from from the uh, accredited uh, bank maybe the bank has actually not one but more core or legacy systems for example for other uh, other business lines so this could be for example retail banking uh, core system and here would be um, corporate or SME then of course more regulatory and uh, other uh, demands like somewhere uh, anti-money laundering systems more strict KYC or customer due diligence systems 
for some workflow systems, systems to manage employees and so on and so on. All these supporting systems might not necessarily replicate the data from core banking, but probably they use these data in their processes or need to read them, write them. So most of them will have some kind of interaction with uh, this uh, core banking, which again makes it hard to replace or modernize this core in the heart of a bank. That's it for today. I hope you know now where the core banking abbreviation comes from, what is it more or less, and what are the potential or existing problems with such systems. Let me know in comments below what else would you like to know about fintech, so IT in financial systems, banks or other kind of markets. And if you liked it, thumbs up, I will know whether to create next content like this.